Speaking of news, uh, many of you might remember that Virginia Governor Glenn Youngkin was elected in 2021 largely due to his campaigning on schools and education. We were in Virginia. We actually, we were in Loudoun County, right at the epicenter of all of this, back right before the election. You know, a major story throughout his campaign involved just what was going on in the school district of Loudoun County, one of the wealthiest counties in the nation. Well, yesterday, a Virginia grand jury released a report. Actually, it was unsealed by a judge detailing their investigation. It was 92 pages long. Their investigation into the Loudoun County Public School District's apparent cover-up of the rape of a student by another student in a school bathroom. Now, this was not just any student. It was a student who said he was trans, whatever. He was wearing a dress, a skirt, and uh, he sexually assaulted a female student. Now, that wasn't the end of it. He did it a second time. This was then kind of swept under the rug by administrators. Parents were outraged. This is what led to the term parents being domestic terrorist as the father of this girl was drug out of a school board meeting. Well, now we're getting more of the facts through this 92-page special grand jur jury report. Here to tell us about it, Meg Kilgannon, Senior Fellow for Education Studies at the Family Research Council. Meg, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Tony. All right, so we now have more on the story. We now have more on the story, and it is a 92-page document, but the report itself is about 25 pages, and then the remainder is supporting documents, copies of emails, and handwritten notes, and things like that. So if people are interested in reading it, um, it's, it's not that long to read, but it is a tough read, because at every turn you're thinking, wow, they could have done so many other things in this situation that would have resulted in a better outcome. Now, this uh, special grand jury, this, by the way, I think is the result of elections because yes. you had the attorney general, Jason Mayores, uh, who impaneled this special right. grand jury to right. do this investigation because right. this was an issue in the election. Yes, and because also the the school board investigated itself, the school system investigated itself, um, would not make the results of that investigation public, and they didn't even allow school board members to take copies of the report out of the room that they were. It was distributed in. They numbered the report and gave it to the school board members, who are elected by the people of Loudoun County, and then they were collected after they were allowed, you know, a certain period of time to read the report. So, so this um, this report by the special grand jury concluded that the second attack by this predator, the, same, the second attack was preventable and that administrators failed at every juncture. I, I think that's, that's a fair statement. Um, they, they knew that this, that this young man had uh, problems. It wasn't just starting with the rape. He had other behavioral issues. Um, one of the really sad and poignant parts of the report for me um, is there's this quote in there from this young man's mother, who, and she says, I begged them for help for my son, and they wouldn't listen. And I remember um, after the Virginia Tech wow. shooting, um, that, that young man lived, his house is in view of my house, where I live in, in Centerville, Virginia. And um, uh, his, we had a huge investigation after that shooting. Uh, because he was the product of the school system where my family lives. And um, his mother said the same thing, uh, that she had tried to get help for her son and that she just couldn't get help for him. So, so is this, you know, part of this where, we, we, according to this report, there were junctures at which this student could have been stopped or could have been uh, actions taken by the school authorities. But apparently there appears to be a either a hands-off of fear or a willful desire not to do something because of the particular class of this student when it comes to their sexual right. orientation. Right. Well, you see the bias of the school system for um, keeping children in school regardless of what they do because school is the safest and the best place for them and they are the ultimate experts on children well, it certainly wasn't of for all this kinds, young girl. right? 
right? No, it certainly was not. Um, they are very reluctant to, um, the, the Loudoun County in general has a, a reluctance to suspend students. They feel like if they suspend a student, then they don't have the opportunity to correct the behavior of the student or to educate them. Well, how are they correcting the behavior? I, this is, this is, this has absolutely no regard for the children who are at school who are not who are not committing offenses, Maybe who are they're wanting afraid to they learn. they will not be able to indoctrinate children. <laughs> That's why they don't want them to, to I, I would think that the disruptive students would prohibit indoctrinating the willing students. <laughs> so what, what, what were the most poignant aspects of this report as you read through it? Um, the, the accounts from the offending student's parents and grandparents that he was a danger their attempts to contact school officials to report that to them, um, and the, that 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 information wasn't acted on. And, and the, what it, was there a reason given in this report as to why school officials did not respond or act on that? I, it it just goes down the list of of this happened on this day, and then this happened on this day. Um, the school officials don't want to say why they did anything. They they um, they have not been forthcoming with the with the special grand jury. They they used every uh, tactic they could to. They tried to squash all the subpoenas. They tried to hide behind attorney client privilege, implying that a conversation that a school board has in the presence of the attorney is covered under attorney client privilege and can't be revealed. I mean, th just ridiculous claims were made for them to try to hide from all of this. At a minimum, this would suggest there was negligence on behalf of Loudoun County. Right. And the the school board um, didn't have all the information they needed to make, make decisions about this. It really is an administrative problem where you have principals and administrators. No one wants to be responsible. No one wants to say the wrong thing. No one wants to be on the wrong side of this particular interest group at this particular moment in time. So, so they do nothing. According to the report, and, and we talked about this in the program back when it happened, the superintendent, Scott, uh, is it Ziegler? Ziegler. Uh, lied, actually, when was, he was asked uh, about whether or not there was any record of sexual assaults. This was after the first assault, and he said, to my knowledge, we don't have any records of assaults occurring in our restrooms. Right. Again, at a minimum, there's negligence here. I think there could be criminal culpability. Given the way the school um, the school system didn't cooperate with the grand jury uh, uh, with the subpoena requests, given the fact that they continue to hide and obfuscate and really not consider the safety of, of students in the system, I think it may take some sort of criminal indictment. This uh, special grand jury has not been released. Correct. Could we see uh, indictments coming from this Bressel grand jury? I suppose that that's possible. Could we see parents, now that this information, this was unsealed by, if I'm not mistaken, it was un uh, unsealed by a judge, um, could we not see parents taking this information and taking uh, private legal action, civil civil action? Certainly the parents of the children who were assaulted, I wouldn't be surprised to see them taking legal action. But in point of fact, uh, every student in that school system suffered as a result of this. Um, they, <laughs> they offered trauma counseling at, uh, at the school um, when when the, the father of the girl who was assaulted showed up at the school, that first assault, uh, and he found out that the assault wasn't just a physical attack but a sexual assault, he had just gone straight to the school and he didn't take his wallet with him, so he had no ID, and they wouldn't allow him into the school. And so he made a scene trying to get inside because right. he wanted to get to his family. Um, the email that the, the school system sent out after that evening said that, that someone at the school had made a scene and um, there would be, you know, trauma counselors available to the students if the, the profanity and the obscenity that they had heard as a result of that, you know. Meanwhile, inside the school, they didn't know where the man, where the, where the boy who had made the assault was in the building. They couldn't locate him. So this, this is 
really beyond it's upside, outrageous it's upside down and dangerous and it and it really makes me very grateful that Family Research Council, other FRC Action, other groups are encouraging people to run for school boards yeah. because clearly the experts who are in charge of our kids are not doing a very good job and some inexpert people would probably do a much better job. Without question, and actually that's a great segue to um, this really was a trigger and I say that in a good way, yeah. it was something that alerted parents to, hey, wait a minute, what's happening here? We had the National School Boards Association, you know, after this, at the prompting of the Biden administration, writing the letter, uh, suggesting that there could be violations of the Patriot Act, that these parents were domestic terrorists. Right. And, I mean, that was... Citing the arrest of this father right. as evidence that we are all dangerous. Right. When it was the negligence of the school board following the pol policies put forth by the Biden administration. Right. And, and so it's like they create the problem and then people try to, you know, step in and protect their children. Then they come after them as well. We've seen this pattern we, from this administration. We sure have. But... This was one of the good news stories from the midterm election is that parents across the country got engaged. You know, FRC Action had a number of school board boot camp right. uh, training sessions. But we've seen parents taking back school boards. We're already seeing policy changes. Absolutely. And um, the, as... As we have school board members being seated, some of them have already taken their oath of office. Some of the newly elected ones will take their oath of office in January. But as we see these school board officials taking their oaths, we're going to see some changes happening. Um, there's a really great example in Charleston, South Carolina, of a school board that has now a controlling majority on the school board, and they are going right to work. Um, they have removed their superintendent. They have hired a new general counsel. And, and not every school board is going to need to take that drastic of action. Mm -hmm. But the fact that now we have people who are engaged who are willing to do those sorts of things, we're going to see a lot better behavior of the ones who are left behind. Yeah, we've got a, a piece, uh, Marjorie Jackson with The Stand has actually written a piece kind of giving an overview of a number of uh, outcomes from the school board elections across the country. It's at the Washington Stand. I think we've got a link at TonyPerkins.com, but that comes from the Washington Stand. By the way, if you're not already getting information from the Washington Stand, it is news and commentary from a biblical perspective, WashingtonStand.com or .org. And, uh, but just go to TonyPerkins.com and you can follow the links over. So um, before we run out of time, Meg Kilgannon, what do you think is going to be the outcome here in Loudoun County with, I mean, this continues to be a problem. They've been recalcitrant. They, they're not changing the school system there. Um, this has got to create more pressure and more ammunition for parents to demand change. Right. We have school board elections in Loudoun County in 2023. So... Um, I expect to see uh, announcements for candidates filing for those for those seats, and we, we'll see what happens. All right. Meg Kilgannon, always great to talk with you.